and here they have access to that file. They can download it and it will download and then they can come back. If they don't need it anymore, they should be able to delete it. And then when they're done editing it, they can come and they can just drag and drop the file here and it will upload it directly. So first things first, let's log into our TrueNAS scale and we're gonna create a data set for these files to be hosted in. That's gonna give us the permissions and the space to place files that we want to share over the web to whoever we want. So if you haven't already, create your storage pool, get that all set up the way you want it to, head over to data sets and create a new data set. So I'm just going to label this one accordingly because this is the application that we're going to assign this data set to. Share type will set to SMB for now. Advanced options. We don't really need anything here specific for advanced options. Scroll down to the bottom, select save. Pretty quick, pretty easy. So our permissions currently are the defaults. We can see here owner is root group is root and we have default permissions so we currently have a user that is going to be part of the built-in users group that's going to have the permissions to read and write files to this next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a smb share this is how we can easily on our local network get files into the share so that we don't have to upload or download files from the web locally and we can transfer files drag and drop without having to load the web ui makes it easy to get files on so let's go ahead and click on add we'll select the file browser data set that we just created we'll change our purpose to smb shares that just makes the permissions easy to navigate when we get to them with these smb options go ahead and click on save at the bottom of this once you've done that and we'll enable the service to start automatically. So now if we open this up, we should have a share that we can go to using one of the users that are part of the local users, which is this media user here. We can see that it is part of the auxiliary group built-in users. And they have Samba authentication available. So let's navigate to that SMB share. So here it is, and we should be able to create a file here. Okay, no problem. Next, what we wanna do is disable the share because we don't want it to conflict with the file browser app when we download and installed it. When we start it, we don't want it to complain that SMB is also running on this data set. So go ahead, just uncheck it, and then go over to apps. We'll select available applications. We'll scroll down all the way to the bottom and we should have file browser 2.24. This is the latest version. If you can't find it, you can use the search at the top for file and it should pop up like this. Go ahead and click on install. Configuration here is pretty straightforward. We're gonna leave most of the stuff as default. We can get to the certificate afterwards so we'll scroll down to additional storage. This is where you want to change your settings. So we're gonna change this just to data. I like the look of it better. That's gonna be your root folder that you see when you log in. Host path, this is where we're gonna select the directory or the data set that we created for this app. Now the limits, if, if you have a more powerful machine running TrueNAS, this should be fine. Mine, I'm gonna lower it by quite a bit because I don't need a lot of power to run this. So that looks fine to me. We'll go ahead and click on save. We come over to the installed applications tab and this should be deploying. Should take about 30 seconds or less. Typically for me, we'll wait for it to become active instead of deploying. Okay, there it is. It is now active and pretty easily to access this. We can just click on web portal here. 
Let's go ahead and click on web portal and we will have this interface and the default login and password is admin admin. We'll go ahead admin admin and right away the first thing that we want to do go to our settings change our password update and we can see here we go my files go data and there's that new folder that we created with our SMB share. So the SMB share if you remember we turned it off so that we could deploy this app. If we turn it back on, that folder will reappear. So let's go ahead and do that. Go over to shares, enable that one, refresh, there's file browser and there's our folder and we can drag and drop some files in here. So we should be able to make a file in here. I'll do a text document, call it test. And there it is. And if we go over to our file browser, if we go into there, there is our test document. And we can download it. We should be able to double click on it, edit, save, close it. And if we refresh here, we should be able to open it up here and see that it says edit. So if you want to get files into the share, you can just drag and drop them with an SMB share. Now the cooler options for this are as follows. The share functionality. So if I want to share a folder specifically with somebody, I can select the folder or I can select the file. But if we select the folder or the file and select share up here, we can select how many days, hours, or minutes that we want that share to be available for. We can password lock it, and then we can send the link to anyone we want. And as long as the port forwarding on our home or business router or whatever we have to for traffic to this machine and this URL, they will be able to download it just off the web. Uh, they don't need a VPN. They don't need SMB access. They don't need an SSH tunnel or a reverse. They don't need any of that stuff. You can just share it directly from this web page as long as you've done the correct port forwarding on your home router or your ISP's router, whatever it is. So I'll do a demonstration of that. We'll make this 365 days for a whole year. And one, two, three, four, five is the password. Share. Then we get a copy the link to clipboard we'll do that and we can close it now if we let's just say open a browser incognito and go to that link we get a pretty plain page the password field on it one two three four five and we can download and use this file or since we shared a folder we get all the files within that folder. We can send this link to anybody and they will have access as long as they have the password. Now, if you choose to do it without a password, they won't need to be, they won't need to put the password in. It'll come directly to this page and they can download these files. Super, super simple for people that aren't very technical and just want to follow a web link to download some files. Maybe you're sharing photos with some family members or some colleagues, or maybe you're a photographer and you want your clients to be able to access their files. You could drag and drop all of their photo shoot shots into a folder here that's their name. You come into the web interface here and select that folder and share it. You get a password link and then your clients can come to the web link and they can just download their stuff. They don't have access to anything else on that system. So we can see here, they, they don't have access. You can click on home. If you log in and log into something, that's fine. Now, if you wanna create new users and stuff like that, that will have long-term access to files or you want them to be able to upload or download files, that is pretty simple as well. So we can go ahead and let's say, create a new folder and we'll name it user one. There's our user one. We can go to our settings, user management, and we'll create a new user. We'll name it user one. We can assign them a password, one, two, three, four, five. The scope is going to be slash data slash user 01. So this user will be limited to whatever is in this directory. When they log in, their directory that they see will just be whatever the contents of this folder are. We'll allow them to change the password. 
and we will remove or allow the options that we want them to be able to do. If we want them to be able to just download files, then you'll want to uncheck this stuff. They can download, they can't edit files, we don't want them executing commands, and we don't want them to rename or move any files. So they'll only be able to download files from the web UI and maybe they can share them. But if we want them to create files as well, or maybe we're giving them access so that they can have their own storage, like their own private little cloud. So we can give them all these. I don't want them to execute any commands. So we'll save this. Now that user is saved and we can log in as that user. So let's just go here. We'll and we'll log in as user one. One, two, three, four, five. And now that user can sit here. These are the settings that they have. They can change their password. They can create files. There's nothing in there right now. So what we can do is come over here on our SMB and we can give them some files. So let me grab a file here. Maybe it's an editor for some videos and I wanna give them my recording. I can upload it right here on SMB. And when the editor comes, they can refresh this and here they have access to that file. They can download it and it will download and then they can come back. If they don't need it anymore. They should be able to delete it. And then when they're done editing it, they can come and they can just drag and drop the file here and it will upload it directly. Now we want to make sure in here that this is all secured communication. So currently it is not. This is not an HTTPS. It's just plain HTTP logins and passwords and these files. They're all pretty much plain unencrypted. Anyone that's doing man in the middle attacks will have access to this information. So we want to make sure that this is secure. So let's quickly do that. It is also pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. It's just a matter of creating a couple of certificates on your TrueNAS and assigning those certificates to the app that we're using here, this file browser app. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go back over to your TrueNAS. So we can go to credentials and go to certificates. From here, we can see that we don't have any certificates created. So we will first create a certificate authority. The certificate authority is what helps create the certificate. And so click on add and we're just gonna go quickly. This is going to be the TrueNAS, TrueNAS FB for file browser profiles. We're just gonna say CA next. That's fine, 3650, it's 10 years. This is all pretty default. We'll fill in this information here. Okay, so for common name, we're gonna wanna put in the address that we're gonna be using for this. So either your DDNS name, if you plan on using DDNS to access this from the internet, or in our case, just the local network. And then in subject alternative names, we can put in both. Then we'll go next and pretty much leave this stuff default and save. So now we have a certificate authority. We can download this certificate authority file so that when we use our web browser to authenticate the certificate that's being used, it won't complain with a warning. And we will show you that afterwards. So right now let's create a certificate this is the certificate that the file browser app is going to use. So click on add. This is going to be the file browser. It's going to be an internal certificate. The profile is just going to be HTTPS RSA certificate. Signing authority is going to be the TrueNAS FB. We'll put 3650 for this just to match the CA or the, the certificate authority. And again, complete your information here. Okay, same information because now these are going to be used in the certificate over the web and that's what want, we want to be used to authenticate this address and this address. So when we go to this address, it's the certificate is gonna be valid for that address. So go ahead and click on next. Leave most of this is default, it's all fine. And then we will select save and we can see that our two subject alternative names are here. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use one of these certificates in the app. So we'll go to apps. We will stop our app. And remember, we have to go to shares and we have to disable our share or the file browser app will complain that this share is in use by SMB. So we'll go back to apps and we'll select edit. We'll scroll down and we'll see here in certificates. We can select our new file browser certificate that we just created. Select it, scroll down and hit save. And then start our app back up. Now it's deploying and we will wait for it to become active. Now that it's active, we can go back over to shares, re-enable that share and we should have access to it. And now when we go over to here, we'll see that we don't have browser. So we put in HTTPS, hit enter. Now it properly loads. And we can see here that we get a warning about the security risk. If we go ahead and we say accept the risk and continue, we will end up at the login for the file browser. But we don't want this warning. We don't want the little warning up here anymore. What we can do is we can download our certificate from the certificate authority. So go ahead and click on download. Then in Firefox, we can go to the settings, go to privacy and security, scroll most of the way down until you get to the security section here where it says certificates. We'll select view certificates. And these are all our authorities. We'll select import. We'll select that CRT file that we downloaded. And we'll say trust this certificate and the emails, select OK, select OK. So once the certificate is installed here, we will also want to just go to where we downloaded it. We can double click it. This will bring up the certificate installer. Select install certificate. Select current user. We'll place the certificate in the trusted root certification authorities. Select OK, select next, finish. The import was successful, excellent. So now when we head on over to our file browser, we refresh this page, we no longer get a warning. We don't get a lock that it has an X on it or anything like that. Now we can trust that the communications between the web browser and the file browser server or your TrueNAS server are encrypted and man in the middle attacks are far less probable. And our data will be encrypted and nobody will be able to see what we're transferring. And that's how we get that secure. And that's how we get our files on and off from the file browser, making it super easy, super simple to share. And once we go out to the internet and use our URL, I can show you that. So if we head on over to a machine that is not on our local network and we use the URL that we use for DDNS, techworks.getsit.net, and we put in the port. Now notice we're not using HTTP, so it should tell us that we need to redirect. Okay, so let's put HTTPS in front of it. And we should get a warning saying that we are visiting our site with an untrusted certificate. It's a certificate nonetheless, so the communication should still be encrypted and working, but we have to go through this warning. Now we could log in and have access to our data and our users and so on and so forth. If we want to get rid of the not secure up here, we'll simply need to download the certificate and install it on this machine. You can do that just the same way we did previously. So if you want to host the certificate on the site here under maybe data or in each user's folder so that they don't get bothered by that warning, they can download it, install their certificate, and they will no longer get that warning. Regardless of the warning or not, the communication is still going to be secure. It's not that it's disabled or anything like that. It's just that this browser can't confirm where that certificate came from. Now you could fix this automatically by getting a legit certificate from a legit certificate authority uh, like GoDaddy or something like that and use that in the communications here. So we can see here. We still have our old share. So if we don't want to share this anymore, that's fine. If we do, we can select the link and we can navigate to that link. 
Okay, so if we get that link, it gives us the URL for it. And as long as you have your port forwarding on your network to that port, a user should be able to get to the page and get their file and download it. And this is probably the easiest way to share files between family, friends, colleagues, so on and so forth is through the web browser. Uh, nobody has to fiddle with SMB or VPNs or network tunnels or encryption or anything like that. It's all pretty well done and managed through here. So I hope this helps you get your files to your friends and family or whoever you wanna get them to or a place for them to give you files. I hope to see you in the next video as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.